And if you just joined us, we're thankful for this building. It's God's incredible provision. And um, we're not totally done yet. We're using our temporary sound system. Um, and hopefully this week or within the next 10 days, we'll have uh, our, reg- our, our new sound system ready to go. I want to welcome you. Uh, I can't tell you how encouraging it is to see friends that I haven't seen for a while. Uh, we had COVID. And then we had, um, and then we moved <laughs> away from you. <laughs> and so it's so good to be home and see so many friends that we haven't seen in a while. Well, we've uh, enjoyed um, preparing for this service. And uh, good morning. Welcome back. Um, I just need to let you know on the second floor, we have a beautiful nursery, and uh, that's where our children's ministry is. If you got in here and you need that, and you didn't know about it, you can adjust now. Never bothers us to have children in here, though. And that means sometimes babies will cry a little bit. I just want you to know that does not bother me. I hardly notice it. (laughs) So uh, don't worry about that at all. I, be honest with you, I changed my message uh, this morning. And that doesn't happen a lot in my life. Um, But it did this morning. And so I sent that to the uh, ASL interpreters and to Lewis really late this morning, a couple hours before the service. And God just put my mind on Acts 4. I really wanted to stay in Acts. We're almost finished with that book. But Acts 4 seemed such an appropriate passage for this morning. And that's because in Acts 4, the local church had just witnessed miracles. And then we see how they responded after those miracles. I don't think it's a secret that us being in this building is a miracle. Uh, This is a building that's completely paid for. It belongs to this church. It's beautifully renovated. And it's a miracle. And it's God's provision. And that's not where the story ends. And the story in Acts 4 didn't end with a miracle. And so I want to take a a few minutes today and talk to you about three groups and how they responded after God performed a miracle. Now today and next week, we felt led to have the congregation together. So we, today and next week, we're going to sing in Spanish and and English. And we're going to have the message interpreted. I really like that. I think it's just a blessing. I love singing in Spanish. Now, I don't sing well in Spanish. I don't sing well in English. But it does something for my heart. And sometimes singing in ASL. It's, just, it's, it's beautiful to see God's word communicated in different languages. And so I'm going to ask you to open to Acts chapter 4. And uh, in a moment, we're going to read the text. But this, this uh, book begins with the details 
of the start of the institution of the local church. Del comienzo del instituto de la iglesia local. Amazing miracles took place. Maravillosos milagros sucedieron. And in Acts chapter 3, one of those miracles took place. Y en Hechos 3, pasó uno de esos milagros. Just to set the stage for Acts 4. Para que vean cómo, cómo se comienza a ensamblar el, el Hechos 4. I'm going to remind you what happens in Acts 3. Peter and John are going into one of the many entrances of the temple. And there was a man sitting there begging for alms. Alms are simply gifts. Do you have a gift for me? I... This was a crippled man. He was 40 years old, over 40 years old. He'd never walked in his life. Nunca había en su vida. As a matter of fact, for him to get to the temple, de hecho, para que al templo, every day for 40 years, todos los días por 40 años, someone had to pick him up, lo tenía que recoger, carry him to the temple, al templo, and put him outside that gate. Y luego de la, de la cerca. And that was what happened this particular morning. Peter and John walk in and this man said he asked them for a gift and he got a gift that day but it wasn't a gift that he expected to get because Peter said to him I don't have any silver or gold to give to you but I do have something to give to you and he gave them, he gave that man Jesus Christ. Y le dio ese a Jesús. I, I was reminded of this yesterday. Eso ayer. Uh, over the last two years, uh, de, por los últimos dos años. Uh, several of our families have moved out of the city. De se han de la over 40 of our families have, from this church have moved out of the city. De 40 de la and I get to see one of those families yesterday. Y he visto una de esas ayer. They were here in, the, in Brooklyn for a funeral. A Brooklyn para un funeral. And uh, that, that young man y ese joven. Uh, and his wife said, we're expecting our second child. Su dijeron, a a and, I, and I just rejoiced with them in that. And I said, I remember talking with you dije, before you got married. Antes de que te we were doing some premarital counseling. Recibiendo, recibiendo just, talk, just talking about, you know, how easy marriage is. And 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 it's no challenge. And <laughs> piece of cake. And we were giving, going through the Bible and just some, some, some themes on marriage. And this, this young man came to America from Dominican Republic. Y este vino de la and he found this wonderful girl here at International. Y una mujer aquí en la and I said, um, dije, you know, why did you, why did you come to America and leave Dominican Republic? And he gave me an answer. Y me dio una respuesta. And he said, but you know what I found that's better than I was looking for in America? I found Jesus. Jesús. I'll never forget him saying that. Nunca decirme eso. And um, I said, you also got your wife too. Yeah. Esposa, <laughs> as he, as he married an American girl. He got a whole lot more than he was looking for. He got Jesus. And, and by the way, that's uh, uh, Josue and Laura. Uh, many of you know Josue and Laura. So good seeing them yesterday. And so this man said, do you have any gift to give me? I'm, I'm hungry. And Peter looks at him and said, I'm going to give you something even better. And he we healed that man. God healed that man through Dios Peter that day. Now, right after that, Luego de eso, the church began to explode. La a um, the, the result of that sermon, that one, Los de ese sermon, he, he, he healed that man and then pe hombre, people gathered la gente se reunió, and Peter preached a message. Y Pedro because of that one message, 5,000 people were saved. And uh, the church then began to just explode and grow. And uh, we, we see after this occurrence, 
that um, there were some events in Jerusalem. Um, those events were, were uh, feasts that the Jewish people would celebrate. And so this event that we're talking about happened during one of those feasts. Uh, the Jewish people have what we would call three pilgrim feasts. A pilgrim feast meant that they would travel to Jerusalem for that particular feast. And so there was Pentecost. Uh, of course, there is... Um, um, it just escaped my memory. <laughs> Passover. Pascua. And then there's one called Shavuot. And this miracle takes place during one of those feasts. So we don't know the population of Jerusalem at that time. But some people say maybe 80,000. Maybe 100,000. So think about 5,000 people being saved. That's almost unbelievable. Now there were tourists there. We'll call them tourists. They were there to worship God at the feast. And so there may have been 250,000 people visiting the temple for the ceremonies and the celebration. And so many of the people that got saved were from outside of Jerusalem. And an amazing thing happened. They went back to their homes, their cities, and they told people what happened to them. And so the word of God begins to, to spread. Now today we're going to look at the circumstances and we're going to join the church at Jerusalem and find out what happened to these people. Because after that miracle took place, it was not smooth sailing. Incredible persecution happened. And so I want to say, I'm thankful for every miracle that God brings. But did you know that everybody in our lives and even everybody maybe outside of a church are not excited about a miracle taking place? And so I think we should prepare our hearts and prepare ourselves for opposition. Because we know that um, there's spiritual warfare that goes on. Now, it's been a blessing to me this morning. Even, even in this service, as we, as we were singing, starting early this morning, about 7 o'clock. Last night, this week, pastors around this city, pastors from outside of this city, and even during the service have texted saying we're praying for you guys today in your new location. What a blessing it is when people pray. And what a blessing it is when so many Christians around this area and the country are praying for us right now. And so let's take a look at these groups of people, three groups and how they responded. They were religious people was the first group. Uh, there were the apostles and then there was the church at large. So let's, so let's read Acts chapter 4 beginning in verse 1. And I'll read it in English and then, then in Spanish. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Now, now let me just say this. Remember what had just happened. The miracle took place. A man over 40 years old who's never walked 
has been healed. Ha sido sanado. And Peter goes, let me tell you about the man who healed him. His name's Jesus. So it doesn't make sense when we say the people came and they were grieved. It was part of the religious group. Not followers of Christ, but they were religious. And it says in verse 3, and they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name? Have ye done this? Let's read that in Spanish. Entonces, hablando ellos del pueblo, vinieron sobre ellos los sacerdotes con el jefe de la guardia del templo y los saduceos, resentidos de que enseñasen al pueblo y anunciasen en Jesús la resurrección de entre los muertos. Y les echaron mano y los pusieron en la cárcel hasta el día siguiente porque ya era tarde. Pero muchos de los que habían oído la palabra creyeron y el número de los varones era como cinco mil. Aconteció el día siguiente que se reunieron en Jerusalén los gobernantes, los ancianos y los escribas y el sumo sacerdote Anás y Caifás y Juan y Alejandro y todos los que eran de la familia de los sumos sacerdotes y poniéndoles en medio le preguntaron ¿Con qué potestad o en qué nombre habéis hecho vosotros esto? And so, this group of religious people, who were they? Este grupo religioso, ¿quiénes eran? There were the priests, you know, self-explanatory. There was the captain of the temple. That was the person who was in charge of the security on the temple now. He made sure that there, everything was safe and quiet. Their rulers were there, the Bible says. That was the Sanhedrin. It was a council of 70 people, 70 men that were rulers. They ruled in uh, civil matters. They ruled in uh, religious matters. So they were there. There, were, there was uh, Caiaphas who was uh, the, the official high priest at that time. ¿Quién era el, 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 el official high priest. El, el, el sacerdote alto. There was Annas, uh, Annas. Um, who was uh, the, the former high priest. Era que era la there was John and Alexander. Juan y Alejandro. And we don't know, it wasn't the Apostle John. Y no era el Apostle Juan. We don't know who these men were. No sabemos quién eran estos hombres. But the mention of their names shows that they, they had gathered the, the most important rulers and leaders from the city in that place. And they sit Peter and John in the middle of them. And I picture in my mind, you know, just guys sitting here like this, you know, looking down their nose at Peter and John. Who do you guys think you are? And so there's this whole group questioning them. What we understand is that the way these religious people responded, first of all, they had misplaced anger. In verse 2, that's what we read. I mean, they're grieved. Because Peter and John are preaching about Jesus. And Jesus was the one who was responsible for healing them. There was an angry spirit. In verse 3, they laid hands on them. They put them in jail overnight. And so they, they were angry at them. Um, you know, part of the group that was there were the Sadducees. You know why the Sadducees were mad? Because the Sadducees believed and taught the people when you die, you die. There's no resurrection. 
And now here they are preaching about a man that had just been raised from the dead. And hundreds of people saw him alive after he died. Can you see that some people who oppose a miracle or maybe get angry at the name of Jesus do so because they have a personal agenda as the Sadducees did. And so there was anger there was this misplaced grief and then they asked him a question in verse 7 they put him in the middle and they said by whose name are you, did you perform this miracle let me, let me tell you that was an insincere question because Peter and John had been very upfront we were not going to take the time to go back to chapter 3 but the very first thing they said to that man was that you're being healed by Jesus Christ and they proclaimed the name of Christ throughout the message and so they asked this insincere question they were just simply trying to trap them they knew the answer to that question but they wanted to try to trap them and cause trouble for them. Have you ever heard the story of the couple who were, they were on their first date? And she was expecting him to, to show up at a certain time. And she dressed up. And she got her hair ready. And she put on perfume. And she was ready 10 minutes early. 10 minutes passed. And he didn't show up. 30 minutes passed. And he didn't show up. An hour passed. And he didn't show up. And finally she thinks he's just going to stand me up. She takes off the beautiful dress puts on sweats and a t-shirt goes to the kitchen and just gets as much food as she possibly can find in the cabinet I'm certain it was a lot of chocolate involved sits down in front of the TV gets the dog and starts watching TV her favorite movie is about to come on two hours after the date was supposed to start and there's a knock at the door and she goes to the door and answers the door and you know who was standing there and this guy is standing there he sees her in sweats and a t-shirt not ready and he says, I'm two hours late. And you're still not ready? You know, he knew the answer to that question, I think. But he was just trying to get the heat off of himself. It's exactly what this group did. Hey, Peter. John, by whose name did you heal them? This, this, this lame man. Well, they knew the question. They knew the answer. They hadn't been secretive about that. But sometimes, the religious crowd, and we love them, doesn't like what's happening through the name of Jesus. Por medio del de not, every, not everybody's excited about a miracle. No todos por eso. And that's how the religious people responded. Y así como que la, los But there was the second group, it was the apostles. Pero el grupo eran los 
And we learn how the apostles responded in their culture. Y cómo los en su and it'll help us to understand how we should respond in our culture. Y nos va a a cómo es que creer en I'm going to hit it very quickly. Voy a ir a esto. They first of all, their response, look at verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost. Pedro, lleno del Santo. Now, I don't know if they were writing that about Ray Casas, if that would be what they said. I, I hope it would be. But they've asked an insincere question. They put him in the middle of a group. They surrounded them. And then they begin to pepper them with questions. And the Bible says... Peter's response la de Pedro, filled with the Holy Ghost. Llena del Santo. Can I tell you what we can't respond to a culture que lo que no una cultura, who's not excited about the name of Christ? Que no está por el de could, could be someone at your workplace. Puede ser con que usted could be someone in your neighborhood. Puede ser de su could be an extended family member. Puede ser un And they don't believe anything that you believe about the Bible or Jesus Christ. Can I say what we learned from this scripture is that our, spirit, our response should be Holy Spirit led. Too often I want my flesh to take over. Defensive. Angry. Lashing out. Atacando. It was a Holy Spirit-led response. And then there was this explanation. Look at verse 11. Now remember, Peter's talking to the council. There's about a hundred people around him. And they're questioning him. And in his Holy Spirit-led answer, He says, he says, listen, this man was healed and he was healed by someone that you crucified. That was not what they wanted to hear. And in verse 11, he says, this is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which, is be which has become the head of the corner. You know, that was a prophecy. It, uh, that, that was stated in the book of Psalms. 118, verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. That was a very popular understanding in that day. If you were building a building, you needed a foundation. And they didn't pour concrete like we would do today for a foundation. They would search for a perfect stone. The cornerstone is the most important stone of the foundation. And they would search for the perfect stone. It had to be shaped just right. It couldn't have any cracks or fissures in it. It had to have strength. And so they would search until they found it. Here's the literal picture. How about this stone? No, put that aside. Oh, how about this stone? No, it's not the right size. Throw that one away. How about this stone? It's pretty good and strong, but it's not the right size. Hey, what about that one? And they found the cornerstone. And they said, this is it. The others weren't the cornerstone. We couldn't use those for the cornerstone. This one's perfect. And so they all understood that principle. And Peter said, the cornerstone of all faith. The cornerstone of heaven. 
The cornerstone of forgiveness. You threw it away. In your search to build religion, you're like a builder who finds the perfect cornerstone and doesn't even understand that. And he said, Jesus is the cornerstone, the head of the cornerstone. So his response was biblical. Look at verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there's one, there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And so you know what his, there was the apostles' response to an unbelieving crowd was? They were Holy Spirit led and they were biblical in their response. You know, we get dogmatic about a lot of things in church that are not biblical. And if I have an opinion that's not biblical, it might be an okay opinion, but I really don't have a right to be dogmatic about it. But when it comes to Christ, the truth of the Bible, the gospel, we ought to be dogmatic about it. We ought to hold to that truth. How'd they respond? They were Holy Spirit led. They were biblical. They were exclusive. Listen, don't, don't let that, intim- that word intimidate you as a believer. And if you're not a believer and you're here today, I want you to understand that yes, Christ is exclusive in that he said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Not one of us can get reconciled to God apart from Jesus Christ. And so we hold to that truth and uh, uh, it, it's exclusive. He said, no one comes to the Father but by me. The disciples said, he's the only name under heaven whereby we must be saved because truth is exclusive. But praise the Lord, that exclusive truth is open to every person. And so the invitation comes to every person. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. And so we serve a God who says to all people, Regardless of our nationality, regardless of our last name, regardless of what we have done, regardless of our socioeconomic background, and he says, I simply have come to seek and to save that which was lost. But I also want to point one other point about their response in verse 19 but Peter and John answered and said unto them whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye for we cannot but speak the things which we've seen and heard and so it was a bold response my prayer is that we never lose our, our, our love and also that we would never lose our boldness to speak to others about Christ it doesn't do us any good if we lose our love and speak boldly we could be causing more damage than harm than we are good but when you couple boldness to speak the gospel with a love of the person you're speaking to God works and so I want to challenge us in a new community and in 2023 let's have a boldness as we speak to people around us. 
We don't apologize for the truth. No nos disculpamos sobre la verdad. But God forbid if we ever do it in anger, Pero Dios que lo con enojo, with malice in our heart, con en nuestro corazón, and with a wrong spirit. Y con el malo. So let's ask God to help us be bold Así que le a Dios que sea and loving. Y con amor. And that's the scriptural way. Y esa es la que habla la But lastly, Pero I want to show you amazingly algo how the church responded. ¿Cómo fue que la Look at verse 23. Vean el 23. And being let go, libertad, that's Peter and John, y Juan, they went to their own company suyos, and reported that all the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they heard that, oído, they lifted up their voice to God Dios, with one accord dijeron, and said, Lord, thou art God. Soberano, Señor which hath made heaven and earth and the sea mar, and all that in them is. Y todo lo que en ellos hay. Let me just very quickly as we close tell you what's going on here. Peter and John go to the church say, hey, you've been wondering where we were? We were thrown in jail last night. What? After yesterday? After that lame man was healed? And 5,000 people trusted the gospel? Put their faith in Christ? He said, yeah. He said, not only that, no solo eso, dijeron, but they warned us never to talk about Jesus again. Pero que nunca más de Jesús. And the response is almost laughable. Y la es casi Because if I had heard that si yo eso, from some of you, de alguien, de uno de ustedes, I would have said, oh, that grieves me. Hecho, oh, no, what are we going to do? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? That wasn't their response at all. Pero eso no fue la de ellos. They said, oh, You are God. Let me tell you why they responded like that. They responded like that because they understood in that moment that the opposition was about Jesus Christ. And so this people who had just gone through incredible events I mean they had Uh, gone through the trial and arrest of Christ. After Jesus came into the city and was hailed as a king, he was arrested, uh, persecuted, beaten, he was uh, kept in jail, people lied about him, He was crucified. And then he was resurrected. Uh, and then he appeared for 40 days before hundreds of people. These, the church is a little confused. What is going on? And they would have thought that people were excited about that message. And that there was such an incredible witness that Jesus had risen from the dead. That's not what happened. And so now in this moment, they realized the truth. God, you did something incredible. Jesus is the Messiah. He was your son. And now we've got to get that message out. And there will be some opposition. But now we realize the truth. And they said, Thou art God. They understood God's sovereignty. Listen, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know the problems you face. I don't know the griefs you bring here. I know one of our deacons lost his mom this week. I know that dear family is grieving. I don't know what your grief is. I don't know what's happening in the workplace. 
No sé qué pasa en su lugar de trabajo. I'm not sure the burdens you carry this morning. No sé las cargas que ustedes pasan. But I can assure you there's a sovereign God. Pero sí les aseguro que hay un Dios soberano. And that for to say that he is sovereign. Para decir que él es soberano. Means that he controls history. Quiere decir que él controla la historia. And so that this 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 church this first century church of Jerusalem this local church saw the sovereign hand of God through these events and it, and it caused them to say you really are God you're in control and the rulers tried to thwart your plan and Satan fought your plan but they didn't stop it because you're God and so their response was they understood God's sovereignty look at verse 29 they understood their very own purpose and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word they said you know what is part of our purpose we're going to tell people about Jesus because he changed their life and so they said our purpose is to carry your gospel forward hey by the way that's the purpose of this building right here it's to preach the gospel of Christ hallelujah on Monday through Friday it's happening in the school it's going to happen through classes through services and that is our responsibility may we respond like this first century church and then they understood their need for commitment we won't read it all but in verses 32 through 37 it showed this church knowing the persecution is coming growing together in unity and they began to help each other they began to love like Christ loves and they uh, began to uh, with grace tell uh, others about Jesus and verse 33 says with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them all and, and it goes on and tells how they took care of each other's needs you know what they understood? The need for commitment. Can I tell you this? When we get the gospel, when we understand it, when it changes our lives, along with that gospel and that acceptance and understanding of it, comes a commitment to the gospel. Um, there was a church that I read about years ago and the what's that oh, and, the, and the pastor was preoccupied with thoughts of how he was going to ask the congregation to come up with more money than they were expecting for repairs to the church building and so he, he was a little annoyed to find the regular organist was sick and a substitute organist came into the service. I mean, he just wanted everything just right. He was going to say to the congregation, the repairs that we need in this building are a lot more than we thought. So he was going to ask them to give to help meet that need. And so, uh, in that service, um, he said, listen, here's here's a copy of the bills that are owed. And um, he said, um, I'm going to ask in just a moment 
uh, that everybody who is willing to give extra for the repairs dar más para los if you would stand up si se parar. he said so if you would be willing to give a thousand dollars or more Entonces, a dar mil o más, I'm going to ask you to stand up at this time les voy a pedir que se pongan de pie. and right at that moment the organist began to play the national anthem Empezó a tocar el himno nacional. And everybody had to stand up. Y todos se tuvieron que parar. That pastor loved that organist all of a sudden. Entonces el pastor amó al, al que le tocaba el órgano. Now that's a foolish story. Es una historia como cómica. But I say that to tell you this. Pero le dije esto para un propósito. Commitment can't be coerced. Compromiso no puede ser. You can't manipulate No se puede manipular commitment. el compromiso. Commitment comes from inside el compromiso viene de por de adentro, and it comes out in our actions. En, en, en hechos. And so I want to simply say this. Simplemente quiero decir esto. We've witnessed a miracle in God's provision. Fuimos testigos del milagro de la provisión de Dios. Different people react different ways to that miracle. In Acts 4, the religious people weren't happy at all. They fought it and resisted it. The apostles responded with the Holy Spirit, biblical response, and boldness. The church responded, y la iglesia respondió, saying, Oh God, we see you're in control, you're sovereign. Respondieron diciendo, Tú eres soberano, you Dios, supply. Tú eres el que suple. You provide. Tú provees. They understood their purpose. Ellos entendieron su propósito. Sitting here in this building ought to remind us la gente aquí en este edificio, quiero que recuerde, there's a purpose greater than any of us. Hay un propósito más grande en cada uno de nosotros. And that purpose is the gospel. Y ese propósito es el evangelio. And then they understood the need for commitment. Y luego eso, el And that came out in their actions. Y eso salió con sus so what I want to say in closing is this. Decir para the Bible calls us to two things in this chapter. La nos llama a dos cosas en este Number tipo. one is Jesus. Uno, Jesús. If you never put your faith in Jesus. Si There's no other way to recon be reconciled to God no hay otra de con Dios than through Jesus Christ. Por medio de and if you need to respond to Christ, y usted a Cristo, we would love to, to talk with you about that. Con usted sobre esto. And you may even say, I don't know that that's the only way to be reconciled to God. Time doesn't permit me to thoroughly explain that in this service. But I would love to share with you why that's true and what the Bible says. Not only does the Bible call us to Christ, no solo la Biblia nos llama a Cristo, but it calls us to a commitment to his cause. Pero nos llama a un compromiso a su causa. And so, may we respond Entonces, to that cause. A ese, a esa causa. May we respond to Jesus Christ. A Cristo Jesús. Would you join me in prayer? ¿Se puede, se puede unir conmigo en oración? Father, a miracle took place. Padre, un milagro tomó lugar. And It just was the beginning of work. Solo fue el principio de una... Help us to respond Ayúdanos a responder. with an understanding of what you're doing, Con entendimiento de lo que tú haces. why you're doing it, ¿Por qué lo haces? because as Pastor Jeffrey said at the beginning, Como dijo el Pastor Jeffrey en la, en el principio, a building doesn't really mean anything. Un edificio, la verdad, que no quiere decir nada. But what occurs in that building Pero lo que ocurre en este edificio can change lives puede cambiar vidas and change eternity y cambiar la eternidad and lead people to Christ. Y, y liderar gente a Cristo. And so we as a church Así como nosotros, como una iglesia, consecrate this building consagramos este edificio to your cause. A tu causa. May we fill every room in this building. Cada uno de los en este seven days a week. Siete días de la semana, with the gospel. El evangelio, the life-changing ministry of the gospel. El ministerio del evangelio que cambia. May the result of this building in this community. Los resultados de este edificio en esta comunidad, be that the gospel of peace. Sean que el evangelio de paz 
permeates and consumes this community and change, changes lives. May our presence in this community make a difference like it was the difference that was made in Jerusalem. And for this, we depend on you. And we recognize and acknowledge your sovereign. We speak with a unified voice that we love you. And today we recognize you call us to commitment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.